In today's video, I am going to show you how you can use R to generate Volcano plots when dealing with gene expression data. Volcano plots are 2D scatter plots that have the shape of a volcano. With Volcano plots, the log 2 fold changes is on the x axis, and then on the y axis, we have the negative log of the p values. And by setting a threshold, you'll be able to identify genes that have been um, expressed significantly. So that means we are looking at um, significantly um, expressed genes. That's what you can use the Volcano Plus to do. And that means you'll be able to go further and then identify down regulated, up regulated, or those genes that are not differentially expressed. So, this is how Volcano Plus can be used to visualize the data. And you can represent each of these groups using a color code here, as has been shown here. With the Volcano Plus, we see that the left side has the down regulated genes, and on the right side, we have the up regulated genes. The middle side here has those genes that are not differentially expressed. You can go further to give additional labels to genes that are of interest to you. And so, by the end of the tutorial, you would have been able to generate these cool plots that I'm showing right now. For this tutorial, the only requirement is to have R installed, and you should also have these R packages. JJ plus 2, JJ repel, and then DPLYR. These are the three packages you need. We are going to use an example data which is available on the Galaxy platform. So let's check it out. This is the page, and I will leave the link to this page in the description box. Actually, this tutorial is what inspired me to make um, the video you are watching right now. So um, that's it. Let's scroll down to this session, okay, we are here. So this session here has the data. So this is the link. We are going to use the first one here. And I'll leave the link also in the description box. And so I'll just highlight and then I'll just click it. So I'll just right click and then just go to open link. I'll just open. And then once you open the link, you'll be asked to save the file. I'll save it with a different name. So I'll say DEGENS dot tsv when i checked it was a, it was a tab separated file so that is why i'm using this extension here so i will just save it um, in an appropriate directory okay so it has been saved so i'll just visit that directory what you see here so this is the file yeah this is the file so this file here, you can even open it with any spreadsheet software. I will just open for you to see. Okay, so this is how you get it done. And so this file here has um, data for differentially expressed genes. I think there are a number of them here. I will just, um, let me just, it back yeah so there are a number of them here we have the id symbol the gene name itself the lock four changes uh, i think there's lock two four changes yeah we have the average expression we also have um, a session here which i'm not really sure but uh, we are not going to use it anyway uh, we also have the p-value and an adjusted p-value so basically it's complete whenever um, you are dealing with gene expression data after identifying the differentially expressed genes, you should have the p-value, adjusted p-value. You should also have your um, expression data. And you should also have the log two full changes and then um, the, the full changes itself. But for this tutorial, these ones are fine. We will just deal with it. So let's proceed. So let's go to the RStudio itself. Um, yeah, before you go to the R Studio, we need to install the packages. Let me just show you how to do that. Um, so I'll load my R first. Okay, so my R has been loaded. So I'll clear the screen first. Okay. We are now going to install the packages. I will install them one by one. We will start with the GG plus two. So I'll say install.packages. And then I'll give the package name. It should be in quotes. So JJ plus two. That is the first package. That is what we are going to use for the plotting. So let's install that. 
Okay, let's select an R crown repository. So I'll use H1 for example. So let's wait for the installation to proceed. Okay, so the package has been installed. Let's install the second one. The second one is JJ Repair. So I'll say install those packages. This one is JJ Repair. Yes, yeah, so we are installing this package. So let's install it. Okay, this package has also been installed. Let's install the last one. And that is DPLYR. So I'll say install those packages. And then I'll specify it and then I'll install. Okay, that package has also been installed. So we are ready to go. So now we are going to quit R and then go to the R studio itself. So I'll just say kill and then I'll quit. Perfect. And by the way, you can also do um, everything on the command line here, but let's use R studio for the meantime. So uh, let's proceed. Okay, I will now open my R Studio. So let me do that now. Okay, I am in the R Studio now. I will first create an empty script here. Okay, so that is done. I am now going to set my working directory. So what I will do is that I will use this particular directory here. The directory where I saved the file that we are going to use. That directory is what I'll use as my working directory. So I'll get a full path in Linux. I can just open a terminal. I'm using Ubuntu by the way. So I can open a terminal there and then just type pwd to get the path of that directory. And then I'll use that. So let's go back to R and then I'll set it. So I'll say set wd. And then I'll put the four parts in quotes. Perfect. So this will allow me to call the file without having to specify the four parts. So that is why I'm doing that as well. So let me run this to get the working directory. Okay, so it's done. Now I am going to load the libraries we will use. So I'll start with ggplot. So I'll say library ggplot2. Yeah, okay, so it's here. Let's also load JJ Repel. And then let's load DPLYR. So we are going to use this. So I'll run them to get them loaded. Okay, so they have been loaded nicely for us. We are now going to read the file. So I'll say DEGENS and I'll say read.csv and then I'll just specify the file. So the file is DEGENS.TSV and I'll say sep equals slash t, that is the separator. So by default, if you use read.csv, R will think that the file has a comma separated value but because this one is tsv which is tab separated i need to specify that here so that is why i use this particular argument so i'll run this as well to get the data read perfect so now it's done let's do an exploration i can just say head dgens And then I'll just run it. So you can see the output here. So let me just um, raise this a bit. Okay, so I'll just show you the output. So we have the output here. So that's it. We already checked it out um, using the spreadsheets um, software. So it's fine. I'll check the column names as well. 
So regions, I'll get a column names. That's the headers. Okay, so we have them also here. So whenever you are reading um, a file, one of the things you have to do is exploration. So exploration will help you to um, understand the data and then get some information that will help you to process um, the files or the data or the information. So that is why we do some of these things. Perfect. So now everything is in place. So we are going to use DG plus two to um, get the volcano plus to generate the volcano plots. But DG plus two requires labels and then some additional information, which is not here by default. So we are going to uh, do that. So what we are going to do is that we need to um, label the entries here. Those that are um, significantly differentially expressed, we need to uh, label them as such. That information is not here. And so you have to do that. And because we are going to label it, we need to also set a threshold. So let's go back to the Galaxy platform. Let's check. Um, I am using the threshold they set so that we can get um, a similar um, figure that is here. Um, so let's check the threshold. So this was the threshold that they use. So I'll focus on the significance threshold. They use 0 0.01. That's the threshold that they use. So the 0 0.01 here is for the adjusted p value. Please take note of that. And then the log 4 changes was 0 0.58. And so what it means is that if um, the log 4 change here, the, the value is less than 0 0.05. And then we have the significant threshold, that's the adjusted p-value 0 0.01. That means it's significant. So that means that is down-regulated. If it's greater than 0 0.58, and then the significant threshold is 0 0.01, that means it's also up-regulated. So that is what we are using here. We are using the threshold here. Uh, points to label will be none. So here we are not doing any labeling. We are just displaying everything here. So let's go back to our studio and then just do that. Okay, so let's continue. So first of all, we are going to add another column. So that column is what will be used to tag or to label the gens as whether they are up-regulated or down-regulated or they are not um, um, differentially expressed. So we are going to add that column. So to add a column, we say the gens and we say dollar differentially expressed. So I'm using a name here and then I'll just say no. So by default, all of them are no. Uh, they are just a uh, starter. So we are using it to start. So I will just run this command first. Okay, so that is done. And so once we have this done, let's check again. Let's just um, explore again. Let's say DEJs. Let's just do a head here. DEJs. Let's say it head. Okay, head D genes like this. And then let's see that particular column. So you see that we have no, so it runs throughout. Okay, so we are now going to um, use the threshold to label those that have been um, significantly um, expressed. So that is the next thing we are going to do. So let's proceed with that. Okay, we are now going to um, label the up and then the down regulated genes. And so what we are going to do is to um, do some queries here. We will just give some commands and then I will quickly um, proceed and then just do the labeling for us. And before I do the labeling, let me just check the number of rows here. So I'll say dim the genes. This will give me the number of rows and columns. So the rows here uh, refer to the genes. I'm assuming that each row is a distinct or a unique gene. And so we have 15,804 genes here. And this is where um, the power of programming comes in handy because if you look at these entries, 
trying to manually um, label them will be very, very difficult. It can take you forever. And that is why we do programming to use some few commands to process um, large amounts of data. So it's important to learn program. So let's proceed. So let's just continue. I'll just proceed. So I am now going to label the up and the down regulated genes. So what will happen is that those that are significantly expressed, this particular column here, differentially expressed will be up or down regulated. Okay, so we are using the threshold that I showed. And so this is how we do it. Let's start with the up regulated genes. So first of all, we say D genes, and then we specify the column again, this column. Well, this is where we are going to um, add the entries. And then we say, we give a square bracket first because we are going to give some conditions here. So we say D genes log FC. Okay, so we have it here, this particular uh, column here and we say greater than 0 0.58 and D genes adjusted p value less than 0 0.01 and we say equals up and so what we are doing here is that we are telling R that check for all entries which have their log four changes greater than 0 0.5 feet and also have their adjusted p-values less than 0 0.01 and all those entries in their respective cells under this column here put this label up there that is what we are doing here. So once the rules or entries um, satisfy that requirements, then the label here instead of no will be up. That is what this command will do for us. So let's run this. It's done. Now with the down regulated, we are going to use the same command. I will just copy and paste here. But this time, the log for change will be less because we are looking at down regulated and when we come here the label will be down like this so that is how it's going to be so let's run this that is also done uh, let's just explore let's explore let's just look at um, an example here to just confirm i'll just um, do with the down regulated genes so i'll just say head d genes if you check these entries here, these entries here, if you check, you see that the log FC, they are all less than 0 0.58. And then when you come to adjusted p-value, they are also less than 0 0.0. So these are um, significant. And so we are expecting that under this column, the differential express column, instead of no, we will have down. So let's run this to check. So let's run this command. So we see, Perfect. So you will see that it has changed. Okay, so this is the power of programming. And so what are you done successful? You can also try with the app regulated um, genes, but you will get the expected results. So just check it out um, and then see. Perfect. So let's proceed. I will just proceed with the rest of the activity. Perfect. So now we have this particular one here, the differential express column um, done for us. So that is the condition we are using. Okay, so what we are saying is that uh, when we are going to do the plotting, uh, we are going to check these ones here and then look at the entries here and then use them to do the plotting and get what we want. Okay, so it's important that you get this concept. And also, let me say that instead of this one, we could have just used these conditions, but 
when we use these ones, it becomes a bit complicated. So to simplify things, we just uh, put some sample labels here for these conditions. And that is what we are doing here. Okay, so we just take note of that. And here, when we use this one here, we are able to group them with, with volcano plots. We are dealing with down regulated, up regulated, and those that are not differentially expressed. And so once we use this um, strategy here, we get those three groups all under one column, and it's easy to do the plots and then get what um, we want. So that is why we are doing all these things. Okay, so we are ready to go. Now, this is the column that will be used to. Um, give the plots but then we have to give another kind of label uh, by default ggplots requires um, that we give labels and so we have to add another label that we will use so let's create another column and then just add that so we see d genes and we see dollar d label And we say any. So this is what we have. So what we have here, we are giving any. It's just a way to trick um, R into thinking that we are adding labels, but uh, these are not labels at all. They are just um, empty source. But DJ plus requires that we have labels, but because we don't want to do any additional labeling, that is why we are using the any. So and that's it. So we we'll just create this. Perfect. So that is also done. So now we are going to do the plotting. We are going to generate our volcano plots. So we say GG plots. And the data becomes our D gens. So we say data equals D gens. That becomes our data. And then we also give our AES aesthetics. And then in it, we say X, what should be plotted on the X axis? And that is what log FC. So we say X equals log FC. Let me just put a label there. So it's X. So that's the X as is S equals log FC. And then Y equals the negative log of the P value. That is this. So that becomes our X and then Y. Now we also have to give a column. So the column here will be the differential express. So we say call equals if express. And then the label equals the label. So that is how uh, we get this plot. So this is it. Now let's proceed. So this is the first stage. And so we are going to add another stage. So we say plus. We are trying to format our plots. And so we now add a jump point, geometric points. Here it will be blank, empty. And then we add our theme. We want the minimal theme. And then we also add our zoom texts. Test repel. That is also empty. And then we also have our scale color. Color manual. So values equals we give our data. So we are using blue black and then red that is what we are um, giving here so we are using three colors because when we look at the differential express column we have three categories we have up 
down and then those that are not differential express they have the label no so that is why we have these three colors to represent each of them and um, so take note of that so let's add another theme which is the text text equals elements text we want to define the text size so we say size equals 20 so this is the text element okay so all these things are helping us to properly format the uh, plots that we generate so you can customize it you can change the fonts you can change the color i mean there are lots of things you can do with ggplot but we are just scratching the surface here okay we are done so we can run this code to generate the volcano plots so let's run it perfect so the plot has been generated so you can see it here nice and cool you can also see the three groups down regulated up regulated and those that are not differentially expressed remember we set a threshold and that is what has been used and so this is how we generate volcano plots in r now let's proceed so with this plot we can modify it we can add horizontal and vertical lines in some plots they prefer to add some lines to uh, differentiate or it serves more like a, a boundary or a demarcation just so they can uh, clearly see the plot so we are going to add that particular um, information we are going to add vertical lines here and then a horizontal line here just to get things in order so for that we will still use the quotes the same quotes here and then we do some modification we are going to add some information here we are going to add the geometry um, horizontal line and the geometry vertical line so it's called geom h line and then geom v line so let's add them we are going to add them here so i'll add them here so i'll start with the vertical line so it's geom v line and then I indicate the x intercepts. We are beginning with the vertical line, I repeat. So x intercepts. So we say negative 0 0.8 and then 0 0.8. And so this intercepts here, we, we are it's these are points, and so these are the points where the line should be uh, drawn. And so it's going to serve as our range. So 0 0.8 and then negative 0 0.8. That means we are looking at somewhere around um, here and then here. So we take note of that. So we are going to do that here. We can also add another information. We can add the color of the line. So let's say color equals red. You can change it to suit what you want. So that is for the vertical line. Let's add the horizontal line. So we add our plus and we say geom h line this time we use y intercept equals negative log 10 0 0.05 that is what we are using here we can also indicate the color so let's say color equals red Perfect, that is also done nicely for us. So we add our plus again because there is one more um, thing here. So this is how we do it. So once we are done with this, we can run the code. So let's run this code again. Okay, so we have the new plot also generated. So here we can see that the vertical lines here um, they are they are they are okay but the horizontal line here uh, it's supposed to be somewhere here so i'm going to modify this value here i'll say 0 0.001 and then see what happens okay perfect so that has been done so you can see it's also being placed nicely for us so this is how uh, we generate the volcano plots and also specify uh, vertical and the horizontal lines to try and then um, separate the groups okay so that is how it's done
So this is how we generate volcano plots in R. In some cases, we may want to highlight or label certain genes that are of interest to us. And so in the next uh, part of the video, we are going to highlight certain genes. Okay, so we are going to highlight the top significant genes. And so we are going to generate a plot similar to this one here. So here we are looking at the top significant genes and we are going to use the p-value to set the threshold. Okay, I'm following um, the tutorial um, on the Galaxy platform. So here they use the p-values to set the threshold. Okay, so that means that uh, those genes, the top 10 with the smallest p-values are the ones that are highly significant. And that is what we are also going to uh, do. Please note the p-values here are different from the adjusted p-values. Take note of that. We are going to plot using the p-values and those that we consider to be highly significant, we are going to use the p-values also to um, judge or to determine that. So take note of that. It can even um, be seen here. They use uh, p-values. So we are following the same thing here. So let's go back to the R interface. Okay, so what we are going to do is to first sort uh, the data, okay, the table, the DEGs table, um, from the smallest to the largest, and then we pick the top 10, those with the smallest p-values. Before we do that, let's first do a head to get the table again. Just get a first five rows. Perfect. So we are going to sort based on the p-value column. Okay. So to sort, we, we use the arrange function. So we are going to say arrange, and then we specify our DEGs table, and then we specify the column which should be used uh, for the sorting or the arrangement. So it's p values, so p dot value. That is what is going to be used. So let's arrange. We are sorting in ascending order. Perfect, so it's done. But uh, these are a lot. We just want the top 10. And so we can combine it with the head command. So we can just say head. Let me just use a different line. So I can say head, arrange, DEGs, and then I give my P dot value. Let me check. And then I will specify the top 10 here. So I'll run this code. Perfect, so I have the top 10 here. Okay, so you can see that yeah, most of them are down regulated. There, there is just one which is up regulated. Okay, you can also check from the Galaxy page and you see that just one was up regulated, the rest were down. So uh, we are good to go. Perfect, so that is how we do it. If you want just the p-value, in that column you can use the dollar p dot value to get just the p values so let's say perfect so we just have the p values now before we do the plotting we still need to find a way to label okay all those genes that we consider as uh, the top or the top significant genes and so the strategy that I am going to use is to set a threshold so that all genes um, that um, are less than or equal to that threshold will be considered as the top significant genes and we are going to um, use them. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So since I have done the arrangements, obviously the last one is the largest when you are comparing just this top 10. Okay, so that is what I'll use as my threshold. And so I'll just use the same command here. I'll just do a copy and paste. I'll say threshold, thresh, let me use this word, equals, and then I'll just paste it here. Okay, and then I want the last one, which is 10. So I put it this way. So this becomes the threshold. 
So I'll run this to get a threshold. So let's say threshold and you have the value. Perfect. So we are good to go. The next thing we are going to do is to modify the DA label column. Let me just do a head again. This particular column here. So what we are going to do is that those genes that we consider as the top genes, we are going to put their names here as well. Okay, so that is what we are going to do next. So let's just run this code again, this particular one here. I'll just show you something here. I want the top 10. I'll just, let me just recopy this one here. And then I'll use the symbol, yeah, just to get their names. Okay, so these are the top 10. So these are their names. So what I'm going to do is that I'll write a code that will put the names here in the DE label. Okay, and then when we run it, we are going to have their names appearing um, at the appropriate point here. So that is what we are going to do next. So let's proceed. So we are going to use this particular command here. So we say D genes. We are doing it here. So I'll say D genes. Then I say dollar D label. That means we are going to modify this particular column. And then I give my square brackets and I will say D genes dollar P dot value. is less or equals to the threshold that we set. So that means that for all the rows where the respective P values is less or equal to threshold, we should modify uh, the column, okay? And these are the values. We say D gains dollar symbol. Okay, that's what we are adding. And we say DJs dollar P dot value is less or equals to the threshold. Let's order them nicely. Okay, so this is the command. So basically, we are making a query just as we did here, okay? And we are going to have the top 10 genes, okay? So this particular query is what we are giving here. And then we just put them in their respective um, sections here. That is what this code is doing. Let me just add this um, threshold, perfect. So this is how it's done. So let's continue, I'll just, Check to make sure that uh, the code I have here is correct. So let me check. Perfect. So it's okay now, so I can run it. So let's run this code. Perfect, it's done. And so let's just test again. Let's run this again, just to confirm. I'll just run this code again here, so that we see that the labels have been added. Perfect, so we see the names here, okay, just as it's seen here. And so we are good to go. So now that we are done, we just have to call ggplot again. I will use the code here again. Like this. So basically, we are not making any change. It's the same code we are using. But this time, we have some entries in the label, in the DE label column. 
and so it's going to be highlighted. So let's run this code. Perfect. So now everything is done nicely for us. So you can see that those genes that uh, we consider as the top 10, they have been labeled and highlighted nicely for us. So this is also another way you can use to understand the data and identify patterns or maybe look at biomarkers or maybe uh, genes that are associated with particular conditions. So genes that are maybe downregulated or down, uh, upregulated. So this is a strategy to do that. So the strategy here is to just um, use some commands to put labels, okay, in certain columns so that ggplot can use that information to highlight or label um, the genes for you. So that is it. So once you are done, again, you can just save us and you can save it on your PC. So I will save it here. Perfect. So it's done. So and that is it. So I'll just go back there and I see my picture there. Okay, my figure there. So this is how I will do the labeling. Perfect. So that is done. Okay, so let's go back to R Studio. Yeah, so that is how we generate Volcano plots. And let me also say that this particular course that I'm using, um, I adapted it. So there was a tutorial um, that I got and then I adapted um, the course there. I did some modification there and then use it for this tutorial. So I acknowledge the author of that particular tutorial and I'll leave the link to that tutorial also in the description box. So and that's it. So uh, that's all for this tutorial. If you're also interested in um, a full gene expression analysis tutorial, I've made one and you can watch that. Okay, so just check that video that is being shown right now. I will also leave the link to that video in the description box. So that'll be it. If you also want to support this channel, there's a buy me a coffee link that you can use to buy me a coffee so that we can keep the spirits going. So that'll be all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next session. Goodbye.